Tonight on Beyond the District, we see how one tiger is making news. See how lots of people are getting into the fall spirit. Beyond the District will return in two minutes. I'm Julia Slevin and welcome to TV21's Beyond the District. And I'm Carly Cataldo. Later on tonight, we will take a look at how your cat can help you lose weight. But first tonight, we take a look at how a tiger escaped from a truck, ended up wandering around backyards near an interstate in Georgia, and ended badly for the tiger, but it, wasn't, but it was a happy ending for the pet dash hound. CNN's Danae Moos reports. It's not the usual cat you'd expect to see in the yard at six in the morning. Look Take it from there. Brittany Speck and her husband. And she was like, oh my gosh, it's a tiger. And I lost it. At her home in Henry County, Georgia, outside Atlanta, Brittany was awakened by police lights and the sound of her dog's hunt, Journey, outside on a lead, barking hysterically. Police had gotten 911 calls about the tiger near Interstate 75. Unfortunately, it jumped a fence and went after a dog back behind one of the residents here. By the time the tiger had gotten my dog, that's when they started shooting. The tiger's deceased. The officers did use force firearms to put the animal down. Police had called animal control professionals and were waiting for them to arrive with tranquilizer guns when they felt they could wait no longer. What with kids soon headed for school. Felt Entertainment, the parent company of the now-closed Ringling Brothers Circus, told CNN that the tiger was being transported by truck along with other cats. The truck stopped in Georgia overnight. A six-year-old Bengal tiger named Susie escaped unnoticed and wasn't discovered missing until the truck arrived at its destination in Tennessee. A representative for Felt Entertainment called the incident a tragedy. What's it like to look out in the yard and see a tiger? It's definitely not like going to the zoo at all. <laughs> um, my husband looked at me and he was like, is this a dream? Like, are we still sleeping? And uh, no, that thing was massive. Especially compared to Journey, the nine-year-old dachshund, the dog was shaken up but okay with just a few scratch marks. It looks like a, like a paw. Right after the tiger attack, Journey met the press. Takes on a tiger, tail still wagging and tongues wagging over the tail of a tiger where it shouldn't be. Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. Up next, if you're looking for pumpkins to decorate your home this October, you may want to look somewhere else. The gourds this Wisconsin couple is growing might be a little too much for your front doorstep. Eric Peterson has a look. It's six foot by six foot, so it's taller than me. At about five feet tall, Julie Faust says this giant gourd is one of the biggest pumpkins yet. Her husband, Del Faust, agrees. That one got to, I'd say, about 17 to 1,800 pounds, which is good. The pumpkin is one of 10 Faust raised on this property northeast of Fond du Lac. He says the giants have a voracious appetite. We feed them a lot of uh, organic compost and fish oils, kelp. These plants also need a lot of water, about an inch per week. The Fausts use this pond nearby to pump the liquid to the giant pumpkins. 
This one was growing at 43 pounds a day for two weeks. That's 602 pounds. That was the peak. And then it tapers down. And Faust says weather from a cool, wet spring and then summer didn't help. Like this last week when we had 90 degrees, pumpkins don't like it 90 degrees. And they don't like it at 40 degrees. They don't like the fluctuation. Sometimes I wish I were a pumpkin. <laughs> Faust says the squash are pampered. Fans run 24-7, keeping the stems cool and dry. Heating coils in the greenhouse ground give young plants a helping hand. You always try to do different things to, to make your pumpkin grow bigger. The Fausts grow the gourds to compete in Wisconsin Giant Pumpkin Growers contests around the state. This one is headed to Nakusa on Saturday. It's a great hobby. Um, we have a lot of friends that we made because of growing pumpkins, so that's cool. In Fond du Lac County, Eric Peterson, Fox 11 News. Now working out is a great stress buster, but what happens when you add cats to yoga practice? Lindsay Slater rushed up on her Savannah to find out. And the thing about yoga with cats, hi baby, is they have minds of their own and they tend to be the teachers of this kind of class. You've got to be kidding me. Easing the mind and body with a little bit of fun. They're adventurous. Susie Mellaw teaches kitten yoga class at Happy Tails Pet Training in Greenfield. Her students love the idea. I think it's a great idea to get exposure to the cats, exposure to the group, and hopefully there'll be less homeless cats on the street. The cats come from Happy Endings Animal Shelter, the oldest no-kill animal shelter in Milwaukee. People can expect probably the most fun time they've ever had with yoga. You will get run over by kittens, you'll be able to play with them. You might be able to get some yoga done, depends on you but the kittens will certainly make it entertaining. Now there actually is a point to doing yoga with cats, so by the people that are attending the class, hopefully some of these little kittens can get adopted. The first class led to a pair of adoptions. Jennifer Nowak, owner of Happy Tails, hopes to offer it once a month. They all leave with smiles on their faces, which is what we want. In Greenfield, Lindsay Slater, WISN 12 News. Next, it's the proposal video that's gone viral for all the wrong reasons. This after the engagement ring made an actual splash into some water. Matt Flenner reports. Clayton and Brittany Cook smile as they look at their wedding pictures, remembering not just the wedding, but what happened moments after the photos were taken. I look over and I see Clay in the water and I think, like, what is he doing? She didn't know at the time Clayton was saving a life. It was just like fate almost. The newlyweds had finished saying their I do's. After the ceremony, their photographer, looking for a better backdrop, brought them over to a river at a local park. It was a hot day and children were playing everywhere. The couple was taking photos on this bridge when they noticed a child in distress in the water. The groom came running over to these rocks where he pulled the young boy out of the water alive. His face was underwater and he was, he was fighting, like he was really fighting. Lucky he was only a little guy and I could just get him by the, I grabbed him uh, sort of like right here and I just kind of honestly just sort of hucked him up. Their photographer, Darren Hatt, captured the whole ordeal. It was a commendable thing that he did and he sprung into action uh, incredibly quick. Uh, almost as soon as I realized what was going on, he, uh, he had already saved the day. That's clay, like that's clay to me. Like it doesn't even surprise me that that happened. Just, that's something he would just instinctively do. The boy didn't say a word after Clayton pulled him out of the water, but two children nearby told the couple they pushed the boy in while they were playing. We had asked them, we were like, where are your parents? Eventually, the couple says an older sibling took the boy away. They're grateful today, they're not telling a different story. How different would our, like, everyone's day would have been if we were yeah. in the right place at the right time? Considering that a good sign as they begin their life together. Now we're going to take a short break, but coming up, we take a look at how one IHOP waiter saved the day. And we also take a look at one man who always has a smile on his face.
Hi, do you have ID? Yep. Oh, okay, thanks. Your shirt. <laughs>waiter from Texas went from serving pancakes to serving up some justice on a would-be robber. Turns out the bad guy messed with a third-degree black belt. Emily Become reports. When two men and a woman walked into this neighborhood of IHOP, waiter Elijah Arnold said something just didn't seem right. And when I stepped into the galley, I just got that feeling where I just needed to wait and listen. Five to ten minutes later, he heard the register pop. That's really the sound that haunts me because that's the sound that put me into action. And put his third degree black belt to the test. So I like ran up, he like swung the crowbar at me, I like blocked with this arm and then I hit him with this hand and then like pulled him to the ground. But during that process, I don't know if my face hit the register, hit the ground or just hit him in the face both because he had a scar on his head and I have a big old bloody nose now. Arnold held the suspect down until police got there. I mean, even on the ground while I was holding him, he was begging me, like, please let me go, give me, just give me the money, I'm going through a bad time, you know, you should understand this. The thing is, Arnold does understand hard times, more than the suspect could have known. Two weeks ago, I, I wasn't working, um, I was homeless. He just got this job, just got this new work shirt, and had just scraped together enough cash to get this car. I got new tires on the back of my car yesterday, and then I got a flat today. He certainly knows the value of a dollar enough to fight for it. That was my money in the register. It was my manager's money in the register, and it was my IHOP's money in the register, and I'm not going to let anybody take that. Up next, a couple in Ogden, Utah, just opened a store that's aimed at helping their needy neighbors. The Compassionate Sheep is a thrift store, but it also helped... It also has free services for people who have fallen on hard times. Christina Flores reports. Like any other thrift store, Compassionate Sheep sells used clothing at cheap prices. But some things here are free. You're looking at the food pantry. Tanya Duval says she and her husband John like to help people in need. They open the thrift store to fund the food pantry. They don't need to prove that they need food. Anyone can just come in and get food. The Duvals say there are plenty of people in Orem who've fallen on hard times because of job losses or other burdens. There's a lot of people who just don't have food in the refrigerator. John Duvall explains his inspiration for helping others. Jesus says, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and in prison and you visited me. Aside from the food pantry, the thrift store also has a shower for those who need it. Soon the washer and dryer will be hooked up for free use too. You can receive help, but you're not gonna judge you. Jake Chamberlain and Jared Chapman are in a band and stopped by to look for vintage clothing. They're impressed by the store. I remember one Christmas we couldn't get a lot um, as a family and I remember just one day waking up and the doorbell rang and there was stuff on our doorstep. I assume that feeling and that vibe is kind of what somewhere like this wants to give others. The Duvals want this store to be a place where anyone can find a hand-me-down or a hand up. I just wanna give, you know, People hope, give people opportunity to eat. Christina Flores, 2 News. Now, the long nights and days spent bringing in the sugar beets from around the region can wear on a worker, unless you have Todd Bergman in the field with you. The Lake Park man has faced many obstacles in his life, but making people smile is not one of them. Kevin Wallivan has more. It'd be hard pressed to find another sugar beet field in the valley today where Woody from Toy Story is helping clean up the truck boxes of dirt and tailings. The hat, it, it's just, it, this doesn't come with it. It's just, this, this is just fit perfect. This is Todd Bergman. He's 38. And the costume thing, well, it's every day. It all started. Uh, two or three years ago, he has a bunch of old, old men, and they, they couldn't get him to smile. Couldn't. I, I, I was cheery. But they couldn't get a smile, so I thought, I'm going to cheer these up. And so, to make people smile while harvesting beets 24-7... Twelve. Twelve costumes. Todd started buying costumes from Walmart. They, they have a special section for the onesies. And that, that... 
How much? Uh, they're 1988 a pair with tax. Ninja Turtle, Harry Potter, a unicorn. I have three different kinds of Batman. And I have a Wolfman costume. Todd has made quite the name for himself. In fact, traffic has picked up on the gravel road. People are curious what he's wearing on this day. All day long. I mean, they drive by just to see what he's wearing. And the sugar beet truck drivers? But I think the Ninja Turtle's my favorite. Well, they just can't get enough of Todd. He's always having fun, that's for sure. Like, I don't think I've ever seen him in the dumps. He's always been hyped up, which makes it a lot more fun. But life for Todd Bergman hasn't always been fair. I'm, I'm, I'm just thankful that I'm, I'm able to do this because the doctor said there's no hope. I'm a walking miracle. I, I don't like to brag, but it, that's the truth. In 2001, a near fatal car crash next to the Buffalo River changed everything. Five months I was in a coma. It basically changed my life because, you know, obviously. A head injury left him unable to do much of anything. I, I, I had to learn how to walk and talk and do all that, and it, yeah, yeah. He went from hospitals to nursing homes to a rehab center. Yeah. Just to learn how to live again. There, there's a reason that I, I, that God saved my life. And so this, a 38-year-old who dresses up in the middle of a sugar beet field just to make someone else's day. The whole thing is, I'm not normal. After nearly losing his life, Todd has decided it's time to live it, one costume at a time. It is now time for another break. Coming up later in the show, we will take a look at how one grandma is still on a roll. Beyond the District will be right back. Welcome back to Beyond the District. I'm Julia Slevin. The West, the Weston Connor is 69 years old. Gr grandma would rather be on wheels. The BMX racer showed off her youthful, youthful skills at a track in Indiana. She was 40 when she, when her son became a BM, BM, BMX competitor. He was tired of his mom coaching him from the sideline, so she, so he gave her a saying: "If you think this is so easy, why don't you try it yourself?" As, as they say in history, Kata Koza has the story. <laughs> Rider is ready. Watch the gate. 69-year-old Kitty Westenauer got hooked on BMX riding almost 30 years ago. That was probably the most thrilling, exciting, invigorating experience. She's the oldest female BMX racer in the country and still winning championships. Okay, so I am 69, big deal. Age is nothing but a number. Sometimes she competes against women much younger than her and sometimes even against men. Why do I continue to race the sport? Number one, one fun. Number two, more fun. And number three, even more fun. She also loves how it keeps her on her toes. You can look at a track and you will say to yourself, whoa, that's easy until you get to that particular obstacle. Several years ago, Kitty got both her hips and knees surgically replaced. But that's not something that could keep this lifelong biker down. 
the wheels just keep spinning as she continues to inspire the world. Doesn't matter that I come across the finish line first or second or third, I always finish. And as I tell people, every time I get on my bike, I win. Next, more than 60 dogs and cats rescued from the Houston floods are now in the San Francisco area, ready to be adopted. The animals were flown in on a private plane. Now, rescued groups are trying to find people who are willing to provide a great home for the animals. Tiffany Wilson reports. They're only a week old and already these six puppies are survivors. Sunday afternoon, two men kayaking down the Blackstone River in Uxbridge heard this. <coughs> They found floating in the water a bag tied up with six puppies inside. Very sweet dogs. Animal control officer Kevin Sullivan got to the scene off River Road and started taking care of them. The runt was in the worst shape. So he actually had quite a bit of water in his lungs. Up until this morning, he was still pushing mud out of his nose. After care over the last day, all six puppies are doing much better. So young, they haven't even opened their eyes yet. And they're doing fantastic. Uxbridge police now say the focus is on who did this. It's, it's unconscionable. You can't imagine going through my head as a police officer for 29 years, someone would do that, would take six fairly newborn puppies and discard them in a body of water uh, to their death. It's unconscionable. The chief says they're looking for a white man who was riding a mountain bike in the area around noon Sunday. Uh, they're reviewing video as we speak uh, that are in the area, and we were hoping that will yield us some positive results. As Officer Sullivan nurses the puppies back to health, he says offers to adopt the six have been pouring in. It's nice to see that we're going to have a good outcome here, and these puppies have a chance. They have a fighting chance. Now we check out how a Colorado mom is doing what she can to fight teen suicide. She's taking a proactive approach trying to address mental wellness at a young age. And she's doing that through yoga. Reporter Kayla Gallagher takes a look at the new program in Colorado Springs. What happens when we're super busy is the, the end result of that is stress. Do you guys know what stress is? These kids might only be in fourth and fifth grade, but they do. A lot of kids have stress these days, like pressure for school and work. For about one hour each week before the first bell rings, they're taking that stress and channeling it through yoga. You take your right leg and you put it over your left. And maybe you just keep your foot here for balance. Kimberly Wilson, who started the 12 week program, is a certified yoga instructor and mom. She tells me she had to do something when she saw the spike in suicides. Over the last three school years, 14 students have died by suicide across District 20. When that happened, of course, as a parent, I'm trying to think of what can I do to help this problem? And I think we're all searching for answers. I don't believe that yoga is the answer to this, but I believe that it is a tool that we can use. While most of the teens who have died over the past few years were older than these kids, Wilson hopes these classes will act as a proactive approach to mental health. And so far, it seems to be working. It relaxes me from my brother. He is really stressful to me. It helps me kind of find my center and calm. I get stressed a lot and it helps me with that. It helps me calm down when I have frustrations or worries. The kids do typical yoga poses. Airplane, we've got ourselves a dancer, we've got a oh, mountain pose. But they also journal and talk about what's going on in their lives. I like this class because of my teacher. Um, she's really kind and listens to our thoughts. You don't have all that anger if it's stored up in you. <coughs> Sadness, it, it, ju it just goes away whenever you're, whenever you're doing this. I'm guessing I want to spend the rest of my life doing this. So next time you're stressed, take a breath and a pose. Namaste. Remember, if you have a story you'd like us to cover, or if you have an announcement about an upcoming event, please send it interschool mail to the TV studio at High School East, or you can email us at tv21 at trschools.com. Also, be sure to tune in TV21 throughout the day to catch this show and Tom's River Schools today as we bring you stories from around the district. Also, please take a look at our website, www.trschools.com slash tv21. Well, that wraps up tonight's show for Beyond the District. I'm Julia Slevin. And I'm Carly Cataldo. Have a great night.